Hey everybody, Patrick Shaw here from the Combat Chain, here to bring you another Deck Tech video. Today we're going to be showcasing the new Dynasty hero Arachne Huntsman. Arachne Huntsman is the hero from the brand new Assassin class introduced in the new set. Assassin wants to banish cards off the top of your opponent's library using their dangerous attack actions with the new keyword Contract. When Arachne hits an opponent with a Contract attack action, you banish the top card of their deck and... If that card meets the condition of the contract, you'll generate a silver token, which can be used to re-equip your new assassin equipment. It's a fun new archetype, so I'm going to show you what I've been playing with. Then we'll get into the sideboard and what makes it so special for this class. So get your daggers out, gang. Let's talk assassin here on the Combat Chain. <laughs> First thing that we're going to go over is the card itself. Arachne Huntsman is a 4 intellect, 40 life hero. Whenever you play a card with contract, you may look at the top card of your opponent's deck. You may put it on the bottom. Uh, now, let's just quickly look at a card with contract so you understand what's happening there. Oh, hey. Leave No Witnesses is a majestic assassin attack from Dynasty. It's brand new. It is a zero cost, four attack, three block card with contract. Uh, it says, you are contracted to banish opponent's red cards. Whenever you complete this contract, create a silver token. When this hits a hero, banish the top card of their deck and up to one card in their arsenal. Now, when you play this card from your hand, you will trigger Arachne Huntsman. So you will, you will play this card, and then you will look at your opponent, the top card of your opponent's deck and then decide whether or not uh, you keep it on top or move it to the bottom. And if you keep it on top, the expectation here is that when you hit, you'll then banish that card from the top. Now, if the condition is met and that card is a red card that you banish, you will generate one silver token. Hi, Pat here again. Let's have a little conversation about etiquette, shall we? Now, when you're playing Arachne, you're going to have to look at the top card of your opponent's library. That does not give you the right to just go over there and touch your opponent's deck, does it? No, it does not. It doesn't. Make sure that you have a conversation with your opponent before the game to resolve how you will look at the top card of their deck. They do not have to give you permission to touch it. They may want to lift the card up and show you themselves, and they can do that without revealing any information. I, for one, despise when grimy strangers with greasy fingers rub their disgusting hands all over my precious cards that I've spent so much uh, time and money, especially if they haven't asked. But do the right thing and make sure you have a conversation with your opponent before the game about how you're going to see the top of their deck because if you don't you're a dick thanks for coming to my ted talk back to the cards now that we've gone over uh the hero ability and what contract is let's start to let's start the deck tech and look at the cards first we're going to start with equipment and we're going to go over all the assassin equipment first so the head legs and the new weapons First, we have Mask of Perdition. When Mask of Perdition is in your graveyard, at the start of your turn, you may destroy two silvers you control. If you do, equip Mask of Perdition. Attack Reaction, destroy Mask of Perdition. Target Assassin Attack Action card gains. When this hits a hero, banish the top card of their deck. Battle Worn 1. Now, let's take a quick look at what's happening here. Can You can immediately see the deep synergies here between contract attacks hitting banishing cards from the top of your opponent's library, generating silver, and using that silver to repeatedly equip and gain an on-hit from Mask of Perdition. Uh, on top of that, it's battle-worn armor, so you can block for one, and then after it's destroyed, if you bring it back with silver tokens, you'll no longer have that battle-worn counter on. It'll be a new instance, and you can block with it again. So you can repeatedly block and gain an on-hit with these uh, with this mask. Next up, we're going to show the legendary Black Tech Whisperers. Whisperers. Stubby Hammerers. Black Tech Whisperers. 
When Black Tech Whispers uh, is in your graveyard at the start of your turn, sound familiar? You may destroy two silvers you control. If you do, equip Black, Wh Black Tech Whispers. Attack reaction, destroy Black Tech Whisperers. Target assassin attack action card gains. When this hits a hero, it gains go again. Battle worn, blocks for one. Now again, we see the ability to exploit silver generation to reuse destroyable armor and repeatedly gain an on hit. This time it's go again and a, it is another one block. Uh, as you'll see, go again is pretty, uh, it's a pretty valuable commodity in the assassin deck and it doesn't come up terribly often. Uh, so the boots, uh, uh, destroying and activating the boots are going to be one of your main sources of go again uh, in the deck. The Spider's Bite Dagger. Uh, each of these is an assassin da is assassin weapon one-handed dagger that attacks for one. Uh, each says, once per turn action, pay two, attack, go again. Piercing one. Piercing says, if this is defended by an equipment, it gains plus one attack. When this hits a hero, the next time they defend with one or more attack action cards this turn, those cards have minus one defense while defending. What that means is when you attack with the spider bite dagger and you hit, your opponent's subsequent blocks with attack actions will have minus one defense. And that is every attack action that is, that is used to block that turn. And not only that, but it's cumulative. So if you attack with both spider bites and they both hit, the attack action cards get minus two. This both disincentivizes your opponent to block and enables additional banishes. It also makes it more difficult when they have to and makes a dangerous decision point on their end when the time comes where they have to block. Let's get through the main pieces of equipment. Uh, for the chest, we're running Findel Spring Tunic, iconic piece, three charge counters, take three charge counters out, gain a resource. You can use that resource for a lot of different things. Uh, to wrap up the main pieces of equipment, we run Goliath Gauntlet. Uh, Goliath Gauntlet doesn't block for anything. It's an old school card and might seem a little out of place here, but it does have two very important targets which make it well worth the spot um, in my eyes. Now, that being said, uh, this deck is uh, this deck and this hero are very early in the process here, and uh, I haven't tested every possibility, so... If you think that there is a better chest or arm option out there, by all means, leave uh, leave a comment uh, below the video. Tell me what you think. Tell me what your experiences are and uh, why I should run that instead. All right, um, let's go over the equipment sideboard and then we'll get into the cards of the deck. Uh, so we do run Iron Rock Gauntlet. Uh, sometimes you need the one block. It becomes important. Uh, usually I'll put this in against uh, Guardian and uh, Dorinthia for the extra block. Then we run three pieces of Null Rune. Um, this is still, this can change depending on uh, what else, how you feel like your deck works and uh, how you feel about both Icelander and Kano. Uh, we are running the Robe, Gloves, and Arcane Lantern. Icelander with the hypothermia uh, we tend to not want to attack with more than one weapon and very often against Icelander we're not really attacking with a weapon at all so those uh, and it's just those uh, so a lot of the matchups you're just running these four pieces of equipment and you have another four pieces depending on your matchup and so it's basically you're throwing another piece of block on for uh, Guardians and, and Dorinthia and you've got your arcane barrier, your wizards, and rune blade. Let's get to the cards in the main deck. I have this deck organized with a core deck that will never get changed out, and then a sideboard. The sideboard is pretty extensive, and we'll show why in a minute. Um, but uh, I'm going to show you the core cards first. All right, first up, uh, Command and Conquer. We run three Command and Conquers. Um, we talked about uh, targets for Goliath Gauntlet. Command and Conquer is one of two viable targets for Goliath Gauntlet. The potential to swing for, for eight uh, makes it very good. Uh, this card fits very well in the deck between this this and Leave No Witnesses, and we'll, we'll look at that. We just looked at that. Um, both affect the arsenals. Having six cards that affect the arsenal 
is a great thing to have. All right, next up. All right, next up we have Cut to the Chase. Cut to the Chase is an assassin attack reaction. Target assassin attack action with contract gains plus three attack. Look at the top card of your defending hero's deck. You may put it on the bottom. This is zero cost attack reaction. It gives plus three and allows you to con continue to filter the top of the card, uh, the top of your opponent's library if they, uh, if your contract attack did not reveal what you wanted to and you sunk it, then you have another opportunity to look at the top. Uh, Cut to the Chase is one of the bread and butter cards in the deck, which is why it's in the main deck and never comes out. Um, a lot of your strategy is going to be based on going a little tall over your opponent uh, to get those on hits and banish cards. Next we have Leave No Witnesses. We just went over that uh, as an example. Um, so we know what it does. has contract. The contract is uh, you are contracted to banish your opponent's red cards. Whenever you complete the contract, generate silver token. And when this hits a hero, banish the top card of their deck and up to one card in their arsenal. So we talked about the six arsenal disruption cards. There they are. Next up, uh, Razor Reflex. Classic card from Welcome to Wrath that has found a new great home in Assassin. Uh, as I mentioned, there is not a lot of go again inherently in Assassin outside of breaking the boots. Um, we have a lot of one and zero cost attacks in the deck, which makes Razor Reflex a perfect candidate here. We are, in fact, running six, and I'll show you the three yellows uh, coming up, uh, which is a recent change, but Razor Reflex classic fits actually fits with the curve very well when you pitch cards. We'll go over into that later, but um, fits really well, and uh, that's why it's it's in the main deck. All right, Shred, another new card, Assassin Attack Reaction. Target card defending an Assassin Attack gets minus four defense this combat chain. This card as an attack reaction can negate a defense reaction. But also it says card, so it's any card defending. So it can negate an equipment or any other action cards is use, being used as block. Um, the four is spicy because of the defense reactions. Um, I can see an argument where this would come out if you don't expect your opponent to be playing defense reactions. You're not maximizing the value out of it. Um, so that is something to consider uh, with your sideboarding and um, as you'll see here in a few moments uh, it's not the most difficult thing in the world to change out a few cards um, as you flavor to taste All right next up we're going into the yellows we have eradicate eradicates another majestic assassin attack it costs one and its contract says whenever you you are contracted to banish your opponent's yellow cards Whenever you complete this contract, create a silver token. When this hits a hero, banish the top X cards of their deck, where X is the damage dealt by Eradicate. Now, obviously, there's not a ton of decks right now running yellow cards, so it's contract at first glance might seem a little iffy, um, but I will say that Combo Bolton seems to be coming back, uh, and there are a fair share of decks running yellow that are... Uh, Reinar runs a lot of yellow. Dash runs a lot of yellow. Uh, so it's not the uh, most uncommon thing in the world. But that second line of text is what makes it really, truly uh, one of the best cards in the deck. When this hits a hero, banish the top X cards of their deck, where X is the damage dealt by Eradicate. Uh, now, when this card, when you see this card, you want to set up and make sure that you can make Eradicate as tall as possible to maximize that on hit and banish as many cards as you can. Uh, very good to stack multiple cut to the chases and a razor reflex, for instance, uh, to really get that as high as possible and get those banishes. Uh, we mentioned the yellow razor reflexes. We also run yellow shreds. And that's it for the yellows. You'll see, uh, you won't see yellow cut to the chases those actually got swapped out for the razor reflexes uh, I wanted a little more go again um, and you'll also see that there's no art of war uh, we'll talk about that later but art of war 
and things like even bigger than that really didn't fit what I wanted to accomplish here. So they are not here. Next up are the blues. The blues never come out. Uh, so we have Annihilate the Armed. Uh, this is a blue version of the contract attack. It costs it is a one. Uh, it is a one cost attack. It pitches blue. It, it pitches for blue. It blocks three, and its contract is to banish opponents' attack action cards. Uh, very low hanging fruit in the assassin contract world, uh, which is why the blue. Uh, this particular blue is in there. Uh, we do run blue cut to the chases. <clears throat> payday we run three paydays if you uh, it is a zero cost blue pitch with that blocks for three if you've completed a contract this turn create four silver tokens on its face seems really really good uh, i'm not personally sold on it at the moment but it is pretty much best in slot you might be able to put some different cards in there again we're early on uh, experiment a little bit if you don't like the blues that i'm showing you Please put in your own. Tell me what you've what's worked for you and why it's better. I am all ears. <clears throat> Next up, we have Blue Plunder the Poor. Again, we do uh, it is the blue version of its ac action we already run. Uh, we'll get into that shortly. Uh, Plunder the Poor's contract uh, is banishing opponent's cards with cost one or less. Now, I, I, these two, Annihilate the Armed and Plunder the Poor, you'll see that. Um, Attack actions and cards that cost one or less. Both very, very common uh, in the game, and that's why those are the attacks we've we've chosen in here. Uh, we do run Rainbow Shred, so the blues are in there too. Uh, the blue shred gives a minus two, which is not insignificant. That negates an armor block, and it, uh, it changes the breakpoint for cards. Last but not least, we are running Surgical Extraction. Uh, <laughs> I was lucky enough to open uh, open a play set in my two cases that I got. Uh, not everyone's been as lucky. So, you know, if you can get them, great. If you can't, um, it's not life or death. Uh, but it is a great card. It is a two-cost card, which is the other eligible attack for Goliath Gauntlet. Uh, its contract is uh, banishing your opponent's blue cards. And it says, when this hits a hero, banish the top card of their deck, then look at their hand and banish a card. So if this hits, you not only get the top of the top of the deck, you get information from their hand and you get to banish one of those cards, which is huge. Uh, you'll see here, so this is the core of the deck. You'll see it's kind of sparse and we'll, I'm going to show you why in a second. Now that is a 42 card main deck is what we have. So let's take a look at the sideboard. Why is it so hefty? Because the assassin contract card can be very specific and you don't want to just, in my opinion, you don't want to just throw every assassin card there is into the deck and call it a day. I think you want to maximize silver generation, which means that you have the ability to pick the loadout appropriate, appropriately for your opponent. And that, and that aspect is something I really enjoy about the deck, because it really feels like I'm an assassin getting ready to fight my opponent. And I've done my research, and now I'm going to pick the best weapons for that opponent. Now let's take a look at those weapons. Uh, we do run a single regicide out of the sideboard. Long may he reign, the emperor is dead. Uh, it, uh, regicide is a zero cost, uh, zero cost legendary arachne specialization. Uh, when it hits a royal hero, they lose the game. So if your opponent's wearing the crown of dominion, regicide is in play. Um, and of course the downside here, when the combat chain closes, you lose the game. So if you attack with Regicide, you either win the game or you lose the game when you attack. Uh, Regicide can't be defended by cards with the same name as cards in the Defending Heroes Banished Zone. 
super spicy we're not we're not keeping it in here for the royal treatment though if that becomes more prevalent it can easily find its way in um, but this is really for the extra blue when you need it against uh, guardians and wizards uh, you know especially Icelander uh, we with Regicide we will be at 19 blues all right now let's talk Let's talk loadout. What do I mean? Let's take a look at the assassin attack actions we have to choose from. We have Sack the Shifty. The contract is uh, opponent's cards with base go again. Fleece the Frail. Contract is... Banish opponent's cards with two or less defense. Rob the rich. Rob the rich contract is banishing opponent's cards with cost two or greater. Uh, we went over this before, but plunder the poor red. Banish opponent's cards with cost one or less. Slay the Scholars. Contract is to banish opponent's non-attack action cards. Annihilate the Arm. Again, uh, we showed the blue ones here, but banish opponent's attack action cards. Now, before the game, you want to have an understanding of what your opponent's deck wants to do. Uh, pick your weaponry as uh, to best exploit what your opponent is doing. Uh, if I'm playing against a Fi, I know that I'm probably going to play Sack the Shifty, Fleece the Frail, and Plunder the Poor, uh, plunder the poor and Annihilate the Armed uh, to get the best bang for my buck when I am... Uh, attacking there if I am playing against a rune blade I am likely going to play slay the scholar uh, sack the shifty uh, if I'm playing against viscerai maybe I'm throwing rob the rich in because there's a lot of two cost or more attacks that are discounted by rune chance or if I'm feeling feeling spicy against briar see if I can't grab Orthor Surge or a Channel Mount Heroic uh, off the top. So that is, uh, that's the Assassin. That's, that's why I like to call the Assassin a like attack loadout. It's weapon loadout. All right, last but not least, we have the defensive suite. We are running three that all you got. Three Fate for Scenes. And three Sink Belows. Uh, an argument could be made for a couple unmovables as well. Um, I don't see enough where I think they're absolutely necessary uh, at the moment. Uh, but of course, I could be wrong as well. Um, not every hero is going to need every piece of uh, every attack that I just showed on in the sideboard. Um you do want to play kind of a mid-rangey value game, so uh, do do not be afraid to put in uh, and expect to put in six attack, uh, six defense reactions uh, per matchup. Uh, whether you're against a rune blade or a ninja, that all you got comes into play. Um, otherwise, you're usually putting fates and sinks in there uh, to get to sixty cards, and that's that's a okay. They are great in the game, especially uh, especially in the mirror. Right, we have a lot of four attacks, and if you're facing Arachne, you wanna you wanna block them. And that is the sideboard for the deck. Uh, we are running a essentially a twenty-eight card sideboard, so you can pick pick your loadout uh, to your to your opponent. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for our deck tech today on Arachne Huntsman. I hope that you uh, enjoyed a little dive into the hero and some of the 
uh, some of the strategy elements that go I use in playing them, uh, and you are motivated to go out that go out there and play it yourself. I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I do think that there's still plenty of room for exploration. This deck is uh, at best incomplete, but very much unsolved. So uh, there is no best version of it yet. We're trying to figure out what that is, uh, and we're definitely not there yet. So maybe you have maybe you have the answer uh, to that. But uh, experiment, play the game, play the play the hero, and. Uh, figure out what works for you and don't forget to leave a comment below and tell tell me what that is that is working for you that is different from me and uh, let's 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 uh let's share notes the combat chain is on youtube you can find us if you search the combat chain uh, on the search bar be sure to like subscribe and click the bell notification to know when the latest episode or podcast episode is uploaded we are available on most audio platforms wherever you stream your podcasts. Uh, the best way to support us is, of course, through our Patreon. You can find us at www.patreon.com backslash combat chain and can, and can subscribe to us there. It is a single tier and helps us tremendously to keep the lights and mics up and running. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, of course. The channel's handle is at the combat chain. You can find me at Pat Smash Good. You can find Adam at Fom Tulare TCG. Until next time, I'm closing the combat chain. Thank you.